G'day everyone, it's SDS Supercoach, providing Supercoach content for you. I'm here to present a, a team of traps here. I've got Brad from Supercoach Pro here. First video of the season. How are we feeling, mate? Feeling pretty confident this early on, mate, not going to lie. Um, and yeah, excited to do some more content this year with yourself. How are you doing? Yeah, doing all right. Um, we're in February now, so it's probably time to start ramping up the content. Uh, so, uh, look, a couple of uh, announcements. I think uh, me and Brad were having a little discussion last night. I think what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to do a live stream every week. The time's still to be determined, but uh, it will be good fun doing a live stream. We'll have topics, ideas to talk about while we answer your questions every week. Um, we'll get guests along as well, and uh, I think they'll work pretty nicely. Don't you reckon, Brad? Yeah, I reckon it should be good, mate. I'm, I'm keen for a live stream. It gets the uh, audience involved. Yep, of course. And uh, another thing we want to announce is we will be doing the SDS Times Pro League once again, uh, me and Brad still need to discuss when we're going to release the code, um, but uh, probably won't be for the short term. We might look at revisit maybe more in late Feb, early March sort of thing uh, when we release the code. And uh, yeah, look, we're going to do a team. Brad's got six traps. I've got six traps. Personally, I'm not a big fan of these kind of videos because... I'm pretty happy for anyone to pick whoever they like. These are just personal players I won't be picking. Um, yep. uh, yeah, I just don't really like saying traps. I'll title the video traps because it's a uh, uh, good clickbait. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just don't like this sort of style of video, but it gets for you. So let's go. Um, Brad, did you want to kick us off with the first one? All right. Yeah, we'll go straight to the midfield for this one. Port Adelaide player. My first trap for the season, I think, is Ollie Wines. Um, I had him in draft last year, so he did have, I'm pretty sure it was a broken foot or something like that in the um, preseason, so I didn't have much of a preseason at all. But for me, watching the games closely because he was in my dra draft side, he got like 50% of CBAs throughout the year. They reckon he's going to play a halfback role, which we're hearing with multiple players in the preseason. But if you watch his game, he's not really a halfback flanker. Um, he's not really great with the ball in foot. And I don't find him fast enough to distribute enough ball down back. So this thing has a bit of a trap this year. He's not highly owned yet throughout the season, but I feel like he will then go to the midfield and average you, you know, low nineties if you're lucky for the season. And pretty sure he is um, 29 years old. So we don't love that either. So I just think he's the first trap for my preseason, mate. What about what about your ones? Um, uh, just quickly on wines, I personally agree. Um, I think I've been hearing a little bit differently. I've heard that he's going to be playing a little bit more inside, but that's all right. Uh, it's pretty clear that his uh, role is pretty undetermined, clear, clearly. So, um, yeah. look, and his, in his Brownlow year, his average was 110. That's the best he's done, and that's a Brownlow year. Uh, yeah. So his ceiling's not uh, particularly too high in my book. Um, first one for me, we're going to go with Cam Guthrie here. Uh, he's... So I believe he's 31 years old now. Um, he missed he missed most of the season, of course, due to injury. I think he only played five or six games. My main issue is, I mean, I guess I guess the thing is he's going to slot straight into Geelong's midfield, but um, it's a massive layoff uh, at 31 or 32 years old. Ha hasn't played since May last year. Um, he, the, the cat side's getting older. Like, it's a sign of desperation when we're hearing that Tom Stewart might be moving into the midfield full time. So um, I don't think it sounds like DeLong's midfield's in a bit of a dire straight at the minute. So nah, not a, not keen on the pick. Uh, what do you think, Brad? I'm going to be opposite, but like you said, it's just up to your opinion. I actually like the pick weirdly enough. I think Cats ain't got enough midfielders for him not to be in there, but I can understand he could absolutely be a trap. He might average you nicely at the start, and then they might actually decide, oh, they're not going to make finals, and the younger kids might get games. That's more my worry. So I think he's got definite potential to be a trap. But, yeah, if you start him because of the buyers and then flick him sideways, he's at a good price where you could, I suppose, as well. So, But he's definitely trap, trap vibes, isn't he? Yep. Um, yeah, just in my book. Uh, what, what about your second one, Brad? Yeah, second one's going to be a popular one um, that everyone actually does like. And it's got to be Fife for me, mate. Um, I don't think he's ever really played a full season. I, I couldn't even tell you the last time he has. I'm pretty sure he hasn't. I mean, that's a big call. But 
His last time he averaged 100 was um, back in 21, which is only two years ago, you may say. But if you look at his last four years, he's got nine games, seven games, 15 games and 14 games. Um, and I just feel like, yeah, he's midfield against what? Other seconds, midfielders in Fremantle in, in match sims and stuff. So it's not really much of a midfield to be competing with. I just feel like he's one hammy away or one anything away from missing four to six. You're obviously going to start him. You're not going to buy him in round two or round three. Um, but I, I'd be looking at an alternative option around his around his uh, sort of price figure to always go down to. I wouldn't be keeping the cash to go up, but I'd certainly be making sure you have a plan B for a five. I don't think I'll start him, maybe unless he gets like 30 touches in a, in a match. Sim, but I just can't see it for me. He's also... 32 um, this year, and his body just so unreliable. Um, for me, he, he's a trap, mate. What do you think of Fife? Um, you sent me the uh, list of traps for your, uh, that you've created, and it, uh, Fife was actually the only one that is in my current team. Yep. Um, so I guess the thought process here is we don't need him. If he can have a fully healthy preseason, I mean, that's all the signs uh, – you know, for me to pick him so far, he's been fully firing at the minute in the midfield, bit of a rotation around the half forward line. I don't think he'll spend too much time in the midfield, but sounds like he might spend a bit. It's just more the fact that um, if the signs are there and if he's ticking all the right boxes, we only need him for seven games. Uh, we're not asking for a full season here. We're just asking for a quick, quick cash injection. If you're, Playing a bit of midfield, you're giving yourself the best opportunity to make money, also the best opportunity to injure yourself. But with how dire the forward line is, I just don't mind having a crack at him. So I totally get your point, though. Like, uh, this is just how bad the forward line is when I'm picking blokes like Nat Fife again. Um, look, I'm going to get on to my second one here. I've tried to keep most of my players 10% uh, owned or higher, um, just to be a, bit, a little bit controversial, a little bit... A little bit interesting. Uh, look, the next one I'm going to go with is uh, Elijah Sardis from the Bombers. Uh, fun fact, I actually played basketball as a junior with his older brother back in the day. Um, so it feels feels a bit wrong to be, for me to be putting uh, Elijah Sardis in there. Uh, good kid. Um, but I just think he came into the draft as a bad kick. Um, there's no guarantees he's going to be playing inside midfield time, that sort of thing. I think Hobbs is ahead of him. Zach Merritt, you've got Darcy Parrish, uh, Dylan Shear when he's all back and ready to go. Um, you've got all these uh, different options. Uh, Archie Perkins could be another. A lot of players ahead of him in the pecking order. And he has been training on the wing, which I think is no good for super coach scoring. And uh, I think a bloke's around the 250th, 50-ish K range are just much better options here. And you're relying on a breakout here, and that's never a guarantee compared to going with like a James Jordan where it could be a role change. Like James Harms could be a role change, could be spending more time in the midfield, especially if Jack McRae's out. So, nah, not for not for me, Elijah Sardis. Um, what do you think, Brad? Yeah, I think he's only played, what, six games last year. So if, maybe if he had played... You know, 10, 12 games would have been a little bit more confident for a second-year break, yeah. But I just don't even know if he's in the best 22 at the start of the side, uh, you know, come round zero or round one, whenever they're playing. But the issue is, like you said, you've got Hobbs and players like that. If anything, I'd tip Hobbs for a breakout year over him. So, uh, yeah, no for me, mate. And I had Hobbs late last year, and he actually started doing all right. So I think he's well and truly ahead of him. And I just feel like he's one of those rookies that might get dropped by round three and round four, and then he's scrambling to bring in another rookie. I don't, I don't like it. I think he's 23rd best man sort of thing. Yep. What about your next trap, Brad? Um, He's a trap every year. Um, there is actually certain YouTubers that like to bring him in too, which I always love to see because it is a little bit unique when they do. Um, and it's Elliot Yo, mate. It's probably the one of the funniest traps every season. Um, For the last four seasons, you go back, he's played 10 games, 5 games, 12 games and 10 games. And in between those years, he's, he's never averaged more than 90. And it's always been between, yeah, 68, 90, which is a, a fair range. But he's always, like, getting subbed out, miss a couple of weeks here, come back, and there's just no consistency. And I know we're saying, oh, we can start these picks. I wouldn't even be confident to get, you know, the first six games out of these guys. And, and out of all the players, 
um, that I'm talking about in my traps, none of them really have a decent fixture either early on. Um, and that's the other thing I've been looking at. If you're going to pick risky players, who are their six first opponents? And and none of them really appeal to me. And West Coast being at bottom, yeah, he's going to get a lot of ball at half back. But I think he's just had a too risky um, price. And I feel like he's one of those players that if, if he does go off in the match sim or a um, preseason game that we only have one of, I feel like he'll get heavily picked and he'll be a big trap this year again, mate, for me. What do you think of Yo? Um, no, I just don't think he suits... Uh, the super coach classic pick. He sort of suits if he's on the free agency list in the draft, in yep. super coach draft, and it's your grand final week. You see the quality there. It's a one week punt. I think you go with it, but he just doesn't suit super coach classic anymore. It's a shame. Like he's a really talented player, but his body lets him down far too much, yep. and uh, he's just unreliable. And uh, it's as simple as that. Um, look, um, the, I'm going to put Errol Goulden into the mix here. Um, uh, I don't, this is my least favorite player out of my six calling them a trap. I, I, I don't think he is. I think it's more the fact that there's no guarantee that he's going to be playing a stack of inside midfield minutes. He's, uh, he's just so good on the wing. So it's more the fact that I think he's just going to be at a much cheaper price than this. Uh, wing is a very inconsistent scoring role. Um, and I just think, like we, like we saw his scoring last year, just how inconsistent it can be. Obviously, he was sensational. But you can sort of see, you know, you've got the 156s here, but then a 96, 93, 62, that instantly drops you down a fair bit in price. Uh, you've got 47s in there. You've got a, a 62, a 66, a 90. There's just enough evidence there, and especially playing on the wing where he could probably get to as cheap as 520K, and you'll be able to pick him up for a good run when it comes to the end of the season. So he's going to be more... I mean, there's every chance with the early buy as well that he could drop in a couple of sinkers, and he's about 540K, and he's a really good upgrade option for our midfield. So... Um, you're more than welcome to pick him. It's just I think we can get him at a much cheaper price, Brad. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, those statements there. I think he's more one of those players you upgrade to. Um, how many of those early buy players can you carry, especially in primos? Um, I don't think you get as low as what you think he will get because normally if he has a 47, he'll back up with a 156 and sort of averages him out to be 100. So I don't think you get him super cheap, but I think he's a player you, you get after. When's Sydney's first buy? Yeah, uh, like, round five. Yeah, so a player like that, you pick up in round five, and if they have dropped, and you know, if he went like round ninety, um, over those five rounds, I'd be confident to get an early upgrade, knowing that he's probably going to turn it around. And sometimes with horse, it is just a role where he's he's playing him wherever you know they they've got a player down. Um, and for me, it actually depends more on the rookies, like who are they going to play. They get if they play Roberts early on, then he's probably getting less midfield time. So I'll probably watch out for the rookies that come into the Sydney side, like Sheldrick and all these other players for me then to determine if Gordon's a starting pick for me. But he definitely could be a trap as well, mate. So I definitely get where you're coming from, mate. Yeah. Yeah, slim pickings when it came to uh, picking certain traps there. But uh, what about your fourth trap, Brad? Um, Fourth trap, I think I've talked about him too many times this year and I keep still seeing him in a high percentage of size. I'm not sure what he's in now, but it's Tom Lynch in the forward line. Um, as a Tigers man, um, he's he didn't play any match sim, so I just don't like. What is he in? 15 percent. Fifteen percent. Yeah, that's wild, man. That's like he hasn't played twenty two games since twenty nineteen, um, and he hasn't like he's only just started running recently, um, like post Christmas. Before that, he was in a moon boot for like six months. Um, is a key forward. If you look at Richmond's first six games, it's it's pretty, pretty crap to be honest. So. Um, I don't like it, but the one thing that does make me think he could be like an, an upgrade play if he does sort of shit the bed early is he's got to be our only target. Like, because he looked pretty pretty bad in the sim and we've got no other target. So for me, I wouldn't be surprised if he drops a few 40s. You get him for under 200K, not even kidding you, and then you pick him up around five and he goes bang after then when he's had his mini preseason playing. So for me, he's not a guy I actually start, weirdly enough. No, I'm not a fan. Yeah, it tells you how good uh, Kaczynski's going when they've already moved Bolter forward. Um, yeah. 
Um, yeah, nah, not for me. Uh, Tom Lynch, he's only just started running again. Um, yeah, nah, not for me, especially key forward. And yeah. he's probably going to get double teamed in the forward line. Let's be honest here. Yeah. Uh, and bank on one of Cozzy or Bolter to, um, uh, kick the snag. So yeah, Tom Lynch, not for me. The last three I've got here are very popular, actually. Um, uh, We've got Luke Jackson here from the Dockers. Now, I know how bad this forward line is. I know, I know, I know. But if Sean Darcy is in the side, there Jackson is not a top six forward. Now, the second that Sean Darcy, if he was to go down, you absolutely jump on Luke Jackson, no questions asked. But with Sean Darcy, if he's playing, um, it lowers Luke Jackson's value here. So... Look, we can see the run he had towards the end of the season without Sean Darcy here. 93, 100, 87, 173, 124, 123, 101. And you you can just tell with some of those scores that um, Sean Darcy was not playing here. I'm pretty sure this stretch as well was uh, without Sean Darcy too. But especially early in the season when Sean Darcy was playing 61, 57, 67, 65, because he's not a key forward. Uh, I think Freer made a massive mistake uh, uh, re-signing Sean Darcy. I just don't think they can play well together. So I think that's going to bite them on the ass big time for Freer. And I just don't rate Luke Jackson as a pick, considering even though how dire uh, we are in the forward line. What do you reckon, Brad? I'll probably play a little bit devil's advocate um, because I have had him in a preseason selection. For me, he's only probably going to get better with age. So I reckon his floor is going up. Um, and the other thing, I think Darcy hasn't had a full preseason. So I think the split will be able to be more evened out early in the season. Uh, and then he's got that one bad buy. Uh, what well, one buy. It's not even a bad one. It's with Port Adelaide. So um, I certainly can see it going wrong. If he averages like 70 in the first five weeks, you're stuffed at that price because you've lost 150K, no worries. Um, but I don't see a world where I think he's a complete trap in in my opinion. But I think you've had three players in there that I've all had in my side. Like I've had Guthrie, I've had Jackson. So and, and it's good to be different. Like we can't always agree on every single thing. So I actually don't mind playing the opposites. Like you've got five and I don't. So um yeah. for me, I, I don't I don't mind this at all. Uh, that pick. So but yeah, I wasn't trying to um what what do you call like well, if flame by any means, I can see where you're coming from still. Yeah, no, no, I definitely didn't check your uh team beforehand to <laughs> pick my pick my traps. <laughs> no, nah, kidding. Uh this was off the dome, my friend. Um yeah, no. so we've got two, four, six, eight. All right, two more each. Yeah. Brad, who is your second to last uh trap? Yeah, I might need you to help me with this one a little bit. So Josh Weddle's mine in the back line there. Um and I think it's more the second year breakout. I don't really feel that sort of um, vibe with him. I mean, you've got so many other backline distributors there, uh, and I've gone blank with all of them. I can think about four that you've brought in, as in, oh, name your um, back, like your halfback flank wingers. You got Amon, you got. Um, so who's the one you CJ, Jeff. Yep, and what's the one you got from Ambrosius or whatever from <laughs> uh, D'Ambrosio? Yeah, that one. And yeah, then there's so... another one, uh, Impy as well. Sorry, that's yeah, the fourth. Yeah, you got Impy. You got Scrimshaw as well. That sort of thing. Yep. Then you got Mitchell. Uh, Seamus Mitchell. Yep. Yeah, so I feel like they all five of them could go big any week. So for me, I know there's a bit of a role there for him, but they've got five very similar players, and I feel like he could be out of the side very quickly because they're all very much alike. Um, you'd know more than me, though, being a Hawthorne man. What, what do you think of that? Do you think he could be a, a pre-season trap that everyone gets hyped about and sort of floats at the same price all season? Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Weddle's not getting dropped here. He, he's pretty firm in the best swing too here. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, nah, I, I agree with this one. Um, it also, it, this sort of role that they're sort of flirting with is like half back wing mixture of those two positions and I just think that's not enough to hear for him to be I mean he could break out as a player but as a super coach option I'm not too sure I think he'll 
I think that, you know, he might get as high as like 450, but I, I just don't, he'll probably uh, hover around the same price. He, do, he did have some good games, but um, I think it's a little bit too early for him to be a super coach classic pick here. Um, yep. All right, I'll go to my second to last one here. The last two are going to be very popular rookies. So the first one here is going to be Zane Dersma from the Roos. Um, now, I see this being a very similar pick to Matthias Philippou of 2023, uh, where, uh, you know, he's, a, you know, he's the, uh, the, the new kid on the block for North Melbourne, high draft pick. I think just some of the casuals go, oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, easy pick. But he's going to be playing half forward in a in a bottom four side. He's skinny. He's uh, he's a pretty raw prospect as a player. And um, I know he's, he's massively owned, isn't he? What's his ownership? Doesn't say. Oh. What What is his ownership? I'm pretty sure it's like in the 40s, which I find 45%. I find that unbelievable. Just so um yeah look uh Dersma, I just um he's a bloke that will probably get to three hundred k but there's a there's blokes that you can pick on at one twenty three k they're going to be better scorers and make more money so for me Dersma is a no go what do you reckon yeah probably just based on that alone mate it's like you've probably got better rookies at you know sixty k cheaper than that and he's playing North Melbourne forward on as you summed up mate so for me that's a pretty clear trap I I think I agree with that one as well actually. Yep. And uh, Brad, what is your last trap? Yeah. Last trap is Tristan uh, Cherry um, for the Ruck. Now, he's just had like uh, an injury anyway, so he requires surgery on his face for. Um, but that's not my really concern. If you look at the CBAs that he did have, um, particularly, it's, only, it's a very small sample size. It was in round 17 and 18. He had 84% against Geelong, against Stanley. Um, and then he had 82% against Hawthorne, who he was up against Meek and Reeves. In the Geelong game, he scored 102, I believe. And then in the and that was with 45 hit outs. Um, and then in the Hawthorne game, uh, with that amount of CBA percentage time. And this was without Goldie. He only scored a, where is it, a 75. So for me, like a 102 for 45 hit outs, 19 disposals for 102 is, is just, it doesn't make any sense to me. So, uh, and same with the Hawthorne game, you had 25 hit outs and 13 disposals with, you know, a score of 70 odd. It, I just can't see where you're going to get value and who you could go up or down to. You'd have to actually hold about 100k for it to make it a, a worthy of risk of doing that. So I just think he's a bit of a trap this preseason, mate. Especially with the amount of people that are, are on him this early. What do you think of that one? Yeah, no, um, I definitely agree with this one. If he fails, what are you doing with him? Like, are you gonna, are you gonna uh, deconstruct uh, a certain line to replace him with a premium? Are you downgrading yep. all the way to Jordan Sweet or Toby Conway? Like, just pay the extra 70 grand and get Grundy. Um, that's just how I say it. And just pick another ruck. You can go English. You can go Marshall, Gorn, whatever, Briggs. Um, just Sherry. Um, I do think, I do actually think he's a talented ruckman. Just more the fact of how injury prone he is and just the real awkward price tag, unless you think he's going to do a Jared Witts, but it's more unlikely than likely that that's going to happen. So, yeah, I, I, I like the Sherry shout, mate. And the last one's going to be um, uh, my little wizard, Nick Watson, here. Um, no, I'm not referring to my Johnson, but... Um... <laughs> Oh, far out. Uh, no, no, didn't need a laugh there. That was a bit unnecessary, Brad. Um, so Nick Watson <laughs> at 190K, it's, it's a very similar thing to Zane Dersman where the role's just not going to be there. Like he's a small forward in a bottom, potentially bottom six side. Um, is, is he going to get, is he going to be moved up the ground? I wouldn't have thought so. I think he's going to be stuck at the forward pocket here. So once again, a similar thing with Dersma. You could save 70K and get a 123K rookie who will very likely make more money 
and uh, and he's seventy k cheaper. And as and as well, small forwards are very inconsistent with scoring. There and especially for a first year small forward, where they're going to have a lot more bad games and good games here. So there are going to be plenty of games where he goes zero goals, two, seven touches, barely scores. There'll be other games where he goes three goals, one, and uh, scores an eighty five. But nah, just the just the role isn't doing it for me, Brad. Yep. Hey, I have a small bet. I haven't told the viewers or you. 20 bucks says Richmond finished higher than Hawthorne this year. Are you Done willing deal. to accept? Done deal. Done. All right. All right. I might, I've got some other bets throughout the videos, throughout the preseason, and, yeah, just there we go. Yeah, yeah, that's a done deal, mate. Um, uh, Just uh, after the video, just send me your bank details because that's locked and locked. <laughs> that's free money here, boys. All right. Uh, look, uh, we'll wrap it up there because we want to record a video on Brad's channel. As well, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, make sure you go to Brad's channel and like and subscribe and subscribe to me. I'm trying to get a thousand subs before round one, 2024. Me and Brad will be back doing a lot more content throughout the season. Uh, and hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for jumping on, Brad. Thanks, mate. Anytime. Yeah, legend. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one, guys. Bye.